What's up everyone? This is Hecatech Playground and this episode will be again very special because last time I was talking about the AWS tools that you shouldn't miss and I was thinking that would be great to talk more about different tools that help developers to boost their performance and change their lives. And that's something that I really believe in, just to share with the community, share the tools. And this is my four other tips for the tools that you maybe do not know about. Four AWS services that you probably don't know about, new batch, new introductions. So let's have a fun together. Number one, AWS IAM Policy Simulator. So let's go. One of the most important services in AWS, or most important support service, is IAM Policy Simulator. It's beyond epic. I use it every day. I use it more often than I eat. So I really recommend that. You can have like existing policies, exercises, or new policy. What it does. It simulates the policy and its ability to call the AWS API. So if you are confused, if your policy will work for the specific purposes and you don't want to deploy it and try and fail, you can simulate it here. So for example, here I have a different users, roles, different groups. So I can say, okay, I want to test specific role. And for example, I will select, I don't know, my role for backup or whenever. I will select the AKS role, EKS role. I can have custom IAM policies, permission boundaries. All of these things are included. I can click on that and you can also edit. You can edit, for example, you can add there your own stuff or whenever you want. It's editable. So you can, you can add, for example, IIM list attached role policies. I can delete this specific resource, for example, and test it without it. I will delete it. And then I can select the service and I can say, okay, I want to know if this policy allows me to manage an API gateway, invalidate the cache. And then I have a global settings. That means the, uh, I can add the condition keys that I want to put there. And then I have also the API gateway actions for, for, for example, the resource limitations. And I can run the simulation. And you see that this is denied. Yes, okay, it is denied. And there's implicit, implicit deny for that. So the simulation resource it doesn't allow me to do anything with, uh, with the EC2s. So, sorry, with the API gateway. So I will, what I want to try is EC2. And I want to, for example, something, verify something that I already have. It's a create network interface. And you see all of the API calls that are available in the policies. And this is also very good because if you are looking for the specific action and you want to have least privilege, that's help you like on amazing way. So for example, create network interface. Okay. Uh, and I will try this one and run simulation. And you see here that the Amazon API gateway invalidate cache is denied, but Amazon EC2 create network interface, subnet and interface is allowed. And there's one matching statement. And basically it tells you like, what is the statement, what it, what it allows. And then you can clear, clear the results and test with a different setup. This is the most important and most helpful supporting service in AWS. Number two, AWS Code Guru, pretty great tool. Another completely epic service is AWS Code Guru, which helps you with profiling and security analysis of your code. And it can be integrated within the, within the CI workflow. So you can have CI workflows uh, within the GitHub. For example, you can have uh, a CI workflow with some GitHub actions, and then you can integrate it with, with Code Guru, which is pretty cool. You can have like associate the repository from the code commit, Bitbucket, GitHub or GitHub Enterprise Cloud or GitHub Enterprise Server, and you can run an analysis on that. This is a really cool thing. I think that this is super like, underestimated service. It's in the development. It doesn't support all the languages. There are some limitations. You can create your own profiling groups. And also when you will look at the supported environments, the profiler works for the Java and JVM languages. 
and also for EC2, EKS, and ECS, and CodeGuru Reviewer, which includes also the security reviews, is for Java and Python. So this is just a preview. I think that AWS is working on that. They're just testing you know, how people will use it and all of this information. So when I will look at the code reviews, I didn't done any incremental, but you have a full repository analysis. I'll have a demo here. So you see that the this, com this completed, this is full repository analysis, no increment scan. Uh, what is the repository name? What's the branch name? Reviews the line of the code. What is the provider? And when you look at that, it will tell you, okay, on this line, there are hard-coded credentials. On this line, there are also hard-coded credentials. And I can continue and go on. And it will tell you in which, in which files you have an issue and on which line. So you can go there and you can click on this specific, I will click on that and it will like forward you to the specific line and it will tell you where it is. So you can click and you can go directly to your GitHub and see what is happening. And when I will go back to code reviews, full repository analysis, you will see the branch recommendations. So you will know how you, like where you are with your like problems in your code. Then you can create your own profiling groups. And uh, for example, there, there are demos with without issues or with issues. So when I will click on with issues, so it is like when it is profiling your code, it will tell you what are the anomalies, what are the recommendations, time spent, when thing, waiting for the latency, what is the CPU usage, what is the CPU utilization, time spent on executing the code, uh, how the heap memory is used. So this is what are the anomalies. And it is very cool when you will, for example, click or I will check, for example, okay, SDK service clients. And there is like recreation of the SDK service clients. For example, excessive debug, uh, debug trace logging. So it will tell you, okay, you have spent like 4% of the runnable time, which is like by logging and estimated cost of executing these frames per year. So it assigns the problem to the cost. So that means if your code has issues, how much these issues will cost you. And that's pretty cool and is great for knowing the cost per bug or cost for per technical depth. Next one is tree and it's AWS pricing calculator. There was old one, which I liked it a bit more, but this one is also really great. This is new pricing calculator, new, like with, with lots of reserves. And I can say, okay, select the location type, search all services. Uh, here you can plan your cost by defining what you will use, how long you will use it. I will say, okay, I want to use EC2. And I will say, okay, constant usage of some services, I will say, I'm interested in T3, T3A small. I want to have uh, on demand or some, some like three years upfront. That's also good. Then I can add some block storage. I will say general purpose. Okay. And the G storage amount, like 100 gigabytes, for example, or 100 gigas and add the service. And then I will see how much it will cost. So for example, I can add also S3 bucket. I will configure this S3 bucket and I'll say, okay, I want to add some description because you can create your own calculation and okay, I will use 500 gigab gigabytes per month and I will add this service. And then you can like edit the details like outbound traffic, how many posts you will have and lots of th th these things, they have an impact on the price. So view summary and you see that it will cost me like $500. So you can you know export it in csv or pdf you can share it when i will click on pdf okay i will click on okay and then it will like create for me this this nice pdf with the information of the pricing so you can do it by yourself you don't need to like pay some expensive consulting company just to tell you how much it will cost you you can do it by yourself if you have enough data the last one not the least is number four it's AWS Cloud9, which is AWS IDE, directly in the cloud. Another great service I know that many people know about it is Cloud9, but it's worth to mention it. Cloud9 is managed IDE in cloud, and it offers you full integration with AWS IAM. 
It also about, uh, like allows you to debug your code just in the browser. There is a pre-configured CLI. There is integrated debugger, built-in terminal. All of these things you don't need to do. Like have anything, and just with, with one click, I will just name somehow my uh, environment. I will say okay, I can run it on existing compute or new EC2 instance. So that means that it will create an EC2 instance. Uh, what will be the timeout for me when I will be like away and I can have a connection settings with the SSM manager or secure shell or whenever I want to create. So I will click on create and this will create an environment for me. I can use whenever I want. And then when this will be ready, I can click on open on in cloud nine. It's super fast and they, they will tell me we are just creating the environment. It will take a few minutes. So just fast forward the time and see you in a few seconds. Here we are, Cloud9 is up and running. I can create new files with a new file, import boto3, hit it, save it, main.py, and files change, okay, I will say reload. And then I have it reconnecting because there maybe is some issue with, with my connection or reload, but that's not a big deal. It's very really fast. It's web-based. It looks like it is web-based Visual Studio Code. It has almost the same features. Also, the integration with Terminal, so I can write export, and it, it will give me all the environment variables that are already up to date and running. And what I can also do, maybe I'll make it bigger for you because you see that it's very responsive, very fast. AWS S3 LS and okay, my bad, S3 LS and then I will hit it and you see, all good and I can list my buckets. So it is very cool and it's very, very integrated with all the services. There are like read, write, you see that you can cooperate with others. There's a group chat, so it can be like for multiple people cooperating on the same project. It's very cool. Also, when you will click on AWS, the developer tools are there. There's a CDK support, and there is also the code whisper that I mentioned before. So let's go and try this tool and try this service. I'm 100% sure that you will enjoy it. If I forget any of the services that you know and you want to have in the list, put it in the command. Or if you want me to create like a second part, just let me know. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I really enjoyed to be with you. I thank you for being st with me, staying with me watching this episode and I really want you to subscribe. I really want you to comment, just share your thoughts with me. Feel free to reach me on the social networks and I will try to answer you as soon as possible. So I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate that you are being part of the community. Thank you and cheers.